Welcome to another episode of the Biblical Story Series, and uh, we're going to reverse roles a little bit uh, because Brendan has written the latest uh, blog article about finding Christ, uh, the hidden images, what are called types in the Old Testament. It's an excellent article. I commend uh, you reading that along with our discussion here. So I'm going to start with... uh, asking the questions. So Brendan, you wrote a great article on the types in the Old Testament. Explain to us what are types and anti-types in the Old Testament, especially in reference to Christ. Yeah, yeah. So the purpose, for the purpose of this video, a type is a person, object, event, etc. in the Old Testament that points to something regarding the revelation or an aspect of Christ in the New Testament. Now, there can be other types in the Bible that point to other different aspects of God, but for the purposes of this this video and this article, these are these are events, persons, or objects in the Old Testament that point to Jesus Christ. And the anti-type is kind of the fulfillment of that event in the New Testament. So, for example, and we're going to talk more about examples of types later, but just to kind of help you understand... An example of a type in the Old Testament is Jonah. He was swallowed up by the great fish, and he spent three days in his belly. And three days later, he emerged just as Jesus emerged from his tomb after three days inside. So you see how Jonah is a type of Jesus emerging from his tomb. Jesus emerging from his tomb is the anti-type. Okay. So even as the story of Jonah took place, these three days in the belly of of a well... Little did Jonah realize that by God's sovereignty, he was a type or was going to prefigure uh, Jesus Christ being in the tomb Mm -hmm. and then coming out. Mm -hmm. So it was, in certain ways, it was preparing uh, the people of the Old Testament to understand the Messiah, Jesus, and his coming. Now, there's there's numerous, uh, numerous types in the Old Testament, I mean, dozens and dozens Mm-hmm. What are some of the ones, or what is one that stands out to you as being significant or, or, or compelling? The one that stands out to me is um, one that is interesting to me because of how in, seemingly insignificant and confusing it must have been at the time uh, when Old Testament readers first stumbled upon it. And that is Melchizedek, the high priest of God in Genesis chapter 14. Now, Just as a bit bit of backstory on Genesis 14, Um, Abram has just rescued Lot from foreign forces, and uh, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, which will one day be Jerusalem, by the way, comes out and blesses him and blesses God Most High. And speaking of God Most High, Melchizedek is attributed the title Priest of God Most High. And it's interesting because this was before the Mosaic Covenant, which establishes that mm-hmm. Levites must be the priests. You cannot be a priest unless you are a Levite. This was before the Mosaic Covenant. So Melchizedek was a priest and he was not a Levite. And how is this a type of Christ? Well, first of all, Melchizedek was king of what would one day be Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is the eternal and true definitive king of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Melchizedek was a high priest of God that was not a Levite. Jesus Christ is a the ultimate priest. He mediates for humanity on our behalf. He's our ultimate high priest, and he is also not a Levite. That is why the writer of Hebrews calls Jesus a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, because neither of them are Levites. So like in the book of Hebrews, it's written to uh, Jews who became followers of Jesus, and some of their other, um, you know, Jewish family members or people of their clans would criticize them following Jesus as a high priest because he was not from the tribe of Levi. And so the writer of Hebrews is saying you didn't he didn't have to be of the order or from the tribe of Levi. He was from Melchizedek in the order of Melchizedek, who Abraham himself, the father of their faith, the founder of their nation, had tithed to. Mm-hmm. And so that's a very profound uh, type and um, image of, of Jesus Christ and how he would fulfill uh, the Old Testament role of a priest, even though he was not mm-hmm. a Levite. Exactly. He was prophesied to be from the tribe of Judah, you know, which is uh, which he was. 
So, Brendan, as you study types and, and anti-types in the Old Testament, in what ways did you find this to be a significant study? What stood out to you? Well, to me, it just shows the cohesiveness, cohesion of, of the Bible. You know, we think of the Bible, it's, you've described it as a library of books before. It's written by multiple different authors, spanned across multiple different cultures and you know, different languages, some Hebrew, some Aramaic, some, some Greek. And yet, despite all of that, there is remarkable unity to this text. And you can see that in types and antitypes. These types, they're pointing to the New Testament. The, the Old Testament and New Testament are, are linked. They're telling the same story, the story of Jesus <clears throat> Christ. And for this to have happened, to tell a story across this many authors and cultures and, year, and this many years, thousands of years, to tell a complete story... Is a, is a miracle. It's the divine work of God. And just studying types and antitypes, how the Old Testament points to the New, how the Old Testament points to Christ, it's really an amazing thing. Yeah, so to see how Jesus Christ is the central th thread that weaves all of the Bible together, the Old Testament, and of course the New Testament. So how are how is the study of types and antitypes significant for us? Yeah, it's fascinating. It's interesting. It, weaves all the Bible together, that is an encouragement to us. But practically, what difference does it make mm -hmm. for our journey in following Jesus and, and making disciples? Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite things from your articles is that you've, you've written that the mission of God is to restore the brokenness of his creation through Jesus Christ. And I think types and antitypes demonstrate this to us in a profound way, because since, since the Garden of Eden, it's been God's mission to redeem and restore his broken creation through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And what these types and antitypes do is they show that this mission's been the same from the beginning. And when we see it come to its fruition, when we see it come to its apex in Jesus Christ, it also makes us realize, okay, if that was God's mission to restore the brokenness of creation, then in the Old Testament, if it was his mission when Jesus came, it must be his mission now. It's, his mission hasn't changed. Yeah. We need to be keeping in mind that his mission is one we are now a part of. Yeah, so as we say at Crossroads and, you know, Field USA, our mission is to pass on an obedient relationship with Jesus to our community, make disciples, mobilize mission, multiply churches. This is ultimately about restoring that which is broken by sin through uh, the life, the forgiveness, and the salvation that is offered and the hope through Jesus Christ. And that's just woven through the entire Bible. So, Brendan, thanks for your article. It was an encouragement to me to read it again. Very well written. I encourage you, those who have watched the video, to uh, check out the link that will connect you to the article. You'll get more information and more detail in regard to this. And so until then, uh, God's blessing be with you. Blessings. Thank you for joining Anthony and I today on the Biblical Story video series. Please subscribe to the Crossroads CCO YouTube channel, like, and share this video. Until next time.